We've now reached a point in the course where we are ready to start thinking about the second major story that we'll be reading. So we've read Everyday Use, we've read some criticism about Everyday Use, and now we're going to be turning to one of my favorite stories, uh, Herman Melville's Bartleby the Scrivener, which is a story that you may or may not be familiar with yet. It's a story that, while it is significantly older than everyday use, I think is going to get at the heart of what it means to be a student, particularly a student pursuing a professional education um, in the state of Maine um, at the beginning of the 21st century. And if that sounds a little far-fetched to you, let's stick with it over the next couple days. I think that we will get there. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about, about where we're going with this story and what some of the challenges are that we may encounter along the way. So I've talked so far this semester very generally about um, why literature is significant to you. I've talked a little bit last time about the history of literature as a significant tool for education in the United States, but now I want to think about something else. Um, and this is a topic that tends to hit people very close to home because it's a topic that is directly related to home, and that is the question of language. Our language, or language is, something that we all hold very close. It's very personal. It defines who we are. It defines how we talk about the world that we live in. Different parts of the state have different accents that you will have noticed, and these accents have all kinds of social implications. The way in which we talk, speak, communicate, all impacts on how people look at us in society and think about who we are in society. So our language is crucial to us, okay? So let's maybe agree on that for a moment. If we agree on that, then we might also recognize that how we acquire language is very, very important to who we are, where it comes from. So a lot of us absorb our language from our community, from our friends, from our parents. We also get it through our entertainment. Um, we get it from television shows. We get it from movies. We get it from the music that we listen to. All of these things have an impact on our language, the words we use, the words we understand, and how it is we communicate with each other. We might also understand that our language is something that defines who we are in society, so it's really important that we are always trying to develop our language. We're always trying to improve our language so that we can do more in society, be more in society, see more, say more, understand more in society. And that all comes from our language acquisition. One of the things we might recognize, and this is maybe one of the more disturbing things about our society, is that we're not really encouraged to improve our vocabulary. Um, most of the magazines that you would buy, um, most of the television shows that you would watch, even most of the newspapers that you would read, even some pretty highly regarded newspapers like the Wall Street Journal, for example, or the New York Times, for example, have an 8th grade reading level or thereabouts as their goal. And what that means is that if you're only surrounded by these things, which is the scary implication, your vocabulary is never going to advance beyond high school. That's a disturbing thought. It's also a disturbing thought to think that one day you may be 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old, and have a remedial vocabulary. And that is the fate of those who don't try to expand their vocabulary. And unfortunately, our society does not provide many opportunities for that. Without being too grim, we might think a little bit about higher education and the kinds of materials you read in higher education. Very often you're buying textbooks, science textbooks, math textbooks, textbooks for your major. And they're all very expensive, right? Too expensive. And oftentimes students complain the textbooks are just too expensive. Well, if you're a book publisher, and you'll see where I'm going in a moment, you don't want people to complain. So you're going to give them as few opportunities to complain as possible. And one of the ways you're going to do that is you're going to provide them with material that's as easy to read as possible. Because you don't want people complaining that they can't understand your textbook when your textbook costs $500. What does that mean for you? It means that there might be fewer opportunities to pursue the English language and your understanding of the English language and to develop your understanding of the English language in society than you may expect 
It might not be in your entertainment. It might not be coming from school. Here again, literature is very important because when you read a story from somebody who lived 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, sometimes even contemporaries, they often don't care about your level of language, which is sounds mean, but it's, it's wonderful. So you can pick up Alice Walker, you can pick up Herman Melville, and Herman Melville isn't worried like, say, the creators of Modern Family or Everybody Loves Raymond or The Family Guy or the writers of uh, the Wall Street Journal in getting across to somebody with a middle school education in contemporary America in terms of their language. What they're concerned about is using language in an effective way, in a meaningful way, in a powerful way. And we can learn from that. We can, we can expand our vocabularies. We can develop our use of language by paying attention to how it is these writers are communicating. And I find that very exciting and very fascinating because this is material that is free that anybody in society can access and that has the power to develop you in all kinds of wonderful ways in terms of your understanding of not only who you are in society but in terms of your ability to talk about the world you encounter. But let's go back to reality for a second. Sometimes people look at a short story and they think, this is too challenging for me to read. I can't read this. This is too hard. I'm just going to stop. That comes from a couple of places. It comes, first of all, from us thinking that stories are meant to be entertaining, so they shouldn't challenge us. And if they challenge us, they're boring and they're hard and we'll put them down. That's the exact wrong response to a story, um, particularly when a story challenges you in that way. Because the story is giving you the opportunity that your current culture isn't. And the story is saying, here are some words, here are some concepts, here are some ideas, here is some language you're not going to hear in your day-to-day -day life, but you can become familiar with it so that you can use it in your day-to-day -day life, in your writing, in your conversations, to better articulate who you are and where you are. And that, I think, is one of the most wonderful things about literature, is the ability to challenge and develop our language, which is so crucial to anybody who wants to be a professional or who wants to call themselves an educated person. And it doesn't mean you need to change how you talk. I'm not saying there's a better language in literature. That's not what I'm saying at all. But most people would recognize the value in having a bunch of different tools to do a job than just one tool, right? If you only have a hammer, if you have very limited vocabulary, then there's only so much you can do with that. But if you have the hammers and the wrenches and the saws and the measuring tapes and screwdrivers and everything else, there's a lot more you can do. And that's a pretty reasonable thing to say, I think. So when you look at a story like Bartleby the Scrivener, one of the first reactions you may have is this language is very different than what I'm used to. And that's fine. In fact, it should be. I, didn't, I wouldn't want to give you a story that was full of familiar language to you. It should challenge you. What does that mean? It means we need to approach it with a basic tool set we've been using so far. So I need to read this in an academic context. I need to annotate. I need to read and reread to understand. I need to take notes as I'm writing so that I can come back to those notes or questions or concerns to get a sense of what's going on. I need to be aware that I will be confused by what I read. I need to be aware that I will be challenged by what I read. And then that's part of the procedure, not the other way around. Okay, so literature, you'll see this as you get into Bartleby, which is a good story, a great story in and of itself, but you're going to find language used in ways that you're not familiar with. Don't look at that as an excuse to shut down. Look at that as an opportunity to push forward excitedly because this is where it's happening. This is where your culture is giving you the opportunity to expand your vocabulary, expand your understanding of language, and to attain the level that you need to be considered a competent professional. You know, if you can't communicate well with other people, there's only so far you can go in society. Okay, um, and this does not mean that there's anything wrong with your language. But again, we can always add to what we have. And the more tools we have, the better off we'll be. Okay, so keep that in mind um, as you get into Bartleby and as you work through it. And I think you'll find it a immensely rewarding experience over time.